For the past two months, I can't stop staring at this sweater. Okay, not like that, but you know, whenever I see it, it still captivates me. It started when my brother got a few for Christmas. Something about it was so freaking satisfying. So Santa got me one. Yeah, it didn't fit me as good as my brother, but I still kept looking. Now, if you think I'm weird for this, well, first, I don't blame you, but secondly, I'm not the only one who thinks this way. This thing seems to be admired every time it makes an appearance somewhere. A-list actors wear it on and off camera, fashion moguls don it, it was responsible for the fame of a singing group. But why and how? Our story begins in the 16th century on the Channel Islands, where knitting began as an industry. The life of a fisherman was rough in the days of pipes and peg legs. And because the brutal conditions they had to endure, knitted sweaters called Guernseys or Gansies, named after Guernsey Island, became the uniform of the fishermen. Even though knitting was an industry at this time, it was still mainly women that would knit at home for their families or their sweethearts. They start with something as simple as socks and work their way up to the perfectly hardy, water and weather proof, seamless Gansey sweater. Right, mama? Like what you're making me? Yeah? No. Over time, the Gansey became more and more complex in their stitch patterns, apparently with symbolic meanings attached to them, like cable knit to represent the ropes and nets of the fishermen. These sweaters sailed through the British Isles and began to bring about more regional patterns, becoming even more complex as they traveled north. Before you knew it, the Gansey became a certified British classic. Men would wear them not just for work, but outside of work, reserving a special fancy one for Sunday's best weddings and festivals. Villages began to create their own style of patterning, and even this extended to some parishes. But just like a family recipe, these techniques were passed down from mother to daughter, so inevitably they began a lot of times to have their own peculiarities, and thus something of a family signature pattern would be born out of it. Again, just like a family recipe, maybe it's a local dish, but each family is going to have their own little spin on it. Lemon lentil. But as the life of a fisherman would have it, many would find their grave in the bottom of the sea. Davy Jones and Lucker, the unlucky souls to watch the shore, only to be recognized by the knitting of their socks or sweaters. I gotta stop the accent. <sighs> but the story gets good when we reach here. A tiny group of islands right off the coast of Western Ireland. Rocky, flat land with no trees at all. So isolated from the rest of the world that you could still find a man there that spoke only Irish Gaelic. No English in the 1980s. I'm talking about the Aran Islands. These self-reliant folk were not excluded from the adoption of the Gansey. It is the life of a man of Aran was the life of a fisherman. And just like the rest of the Isles, they developed their own personal style. Now the British ruled the entirety of Ireland at this time, and to help lessen poverty in Western Ireland, which included the Aran Islands, they set up the Congested Districts Board for Ireland in 1891. They saw the knitting potential on the island, and they thought knitting would be a profitable industry there. And they were right. It worked. Hey. So there was a sales depot in Dublin called the Country Shop. And a lot like what used to be in my own town here, it specialized in selling traditional crafts from isolated regions of Ireland. And it was in 1932 that there, the first Aaron sweater was commissioned and sold. And not only was it sold to some lucky individual, but it was sold to the nation as a whole, you could say, because it quickly became the symbol for Ireland and the Irish people. It was the thing at the time. But it was in 1956 that it made an appearance in Vogue magazine, which took it international. But it didn't stop there. And then we have Grace Kelly, phenomenal actress. Watch a movie if you haven't with her. And at one point, Princess of Monaco, lucky gal. And one beautiful day, I'm presuming beautiful, in 1960, she gets on her beautiful luxury princessy queenly royal boat. 
obviously probably not like this, but just play along with it, all right? And she's on her boat doing, you know, whatever the frick a princess does on a boat, I have no idea. And then all of a sudden, from far away, a photographer spots her and does what he does best, he takes pictures of women without them knowing from far away. And then we get this iconic photo. And guess what? Oh, look it, she's wearing an Aaron sweater and it takes off even more. Of a brave young highwayman, the story we will tell. But the real moment of fame is the 12th of March, 1961. Cold spell hits New York. The Clancy Brothers and Tommy Mackham, an Irish folk band which actually revived the genre, were set to play in the Ed Sullivan show. And the Clancy boys' ma, what does she do? Like any good ma would do. She knows it's going to be cold, so she sends from Ireland Aaron sweaters for the boys to wear. You can already just see it go down, you know. Oh, that's too cold. Take them, boys. You don't want your fingers, you know, freezing on your guitar strings, no. You can just imagine something like that. And from that point on, it stamped its place in fame and fashion. And we got Mama Clancy to thank for that. Thank you, Mama Clancy. God rest her soul. And you know what? Why not cop their look while you're at it? Because it's crispy. Black trousers, black oxfords, black socks, and a white dress shirt underneath. Everyone wore it. Elvis rocked the Gansey. Picasso showed you can dress it up with slacks and a jacket. Steve McQueen in the Thomas Crown Affair proved it could be a bad boy relaxation piece. Now what man wouldn't want to wear it now? I can't like this, it's too windy out here. Way too windy. Can't do it. Then Marilyn Monroe wore it while singing My Heart Belongs to Daddy in 1960s, Let's Make Love, among other times. Oh, mama. Ugh, sorry about that. Anyway, Ralph Lauren rocked it. It's officially fashionable, my friends. John Lennon, Taylor Swift, Batman himself, Adam Driver killed it in the house of Gucci. I mean, look at it. And who could forget the iconic look of Chris Evans' ensemble in Knives Out? It's always in style, and when it's in a film, it gets even more popular. It turned into headline news. Who doesn't love a cable net? This is truly a sweater that transcends all social classes and actually unites them and their love of it. Talk about amazing and transcendent. Or is it? Because many, many people and scholars will tell you that the story I just told you, its origin, is a myth, a lie, a scam, a sham. A capitalist marketing gimmick to sell sweaters blinded and binded up in Irish nationalism. They never recognize any dead fishermen by the patterns on their Aaron sweaters. That comes from a play written in 1904 and it's actually about some socks. No. But there were no Aaron sweaters back in the days of pipes and peg legs. It's an early 20th century invention with an invented backstory to help sell sweaters to boost the economy and create a symbol for Ireland's growing nationalism and independence. So was this all just a lie? Is the whole idea even of a working man's sweater being desired by the rich and uniting them in their love for beautiful handcraft works of art, is that even real? Well, yes and no. Now, I can assure you that the story I told you in the beginning is the actual one, but it's not the same that you're gonna find on the Aaron sweater shops and markets that will try to sell to you family, clan, pattern sweaters that stretch back traditions thousands of years to the ancient Celts, but it's also not exactly what you're gonna read on Wikipedia or by a few amateur scholars, which are really just that, amateurs who do not know how to do history. So I spent weeks and weeks and weeks digging in and finding the history and the truth about this sweater. So I decided to make a video on the entire history of the Aaron sweater, debunking not only the myth, but also myth busting the myth busters. And I link all the sources and articles that I use. And you can actually find that on my Patreon. If you support me there on Patreon, you will be able to keep this channel free of sponsors so that I won't have to rely on their narrative or anyone else's. And it's the only way this channel is gonna survive. So if you hop over there and support me, I would greatly appreciate it, my friends. It means the world to me. But regardless, even if this sweater was only as old as some amateur knitting historians claim it to be, 
The fact that it's been relatively unchanged in its styling for at least around 100 years or so really attests to its classic style and near timeless nature. Remember, when you're wearing it, it's not about the clout, it's not about the celebrities that wear them, it's not even about the political statement. It's about tradition and craftsmanship, one of the last few bastions of art and beauty left in the world. Because remember, the crafts will heal the world. Now, when it comes to my thoughts and opinions on the actual sweater itself from the Aaron sweater market, I have to say it's very loosely woven, which means definitely it's not waterproof as water will seep into this and hit you. And also any little bit of breeze you're definitely going to feel, which means if you're not wearing a t-shirt or a light shirt under this in the dead of winter, you will be freezing if you feel any breeze hits to you. But that also means that you can wear this well in the spring because I've worn this on mild days and man, the breeze feels so nice when it hits you. But if you're wearing something even as simple as a t-shirt under it like I am now, you're gonna be toasty warm because I am. So it fulfills its role, but you can extend the season of wearing it, which is phenomenal in my opinion. I freaking love it. And I definitely think it's well worth the price even if you pay full price for it without a discount. And I'm gonna find it very difficult to find another sweater that matches this price point of this quality. Now, the one thing I will say about this is that I wish like the original ones, they were a little shorter with the waistband somewhere around here and a little larger. But then again, I'm a little more old school. I like to wear my pants more high rise. I think it's more proportionate and that's just me. And I can always tuck it in like I do now because I'm that guy and I always tuck in my sweaters and shirts. But you're not that guy. Trust me, pal. You're not that guy. You're not that guy. You're not that guy. <laughs>